Hello, everyone. This is your humble and meek recovering CI officer, uh, Kevin Chip, coming to you from the Ascent Off the Grid studio located somewhere deep in the southeastern United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I hope you uh, take a gander at some of the other uh, programs and exposés I've done here. Some at uh, somewhat personal risk. And um, if you like, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as long as we're on and we're not banned. Um, uh, in today's program, I want to address uh, some important issues. Uh, there is a crowd out there attacking me personally and defaming me all over conspiracy websites. I don't mind being defamed. You know, it comes with the territory. Uh, but when they're publishing false information, about me, I think it's important for me just to correct it uh, with the record and the evidence and get into some uh, pretty significant uh, false hoaxes out there that are snaring in, I think, a lot of very good people. And that's what I want to talk about on today's program. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, uh, I uh, please uh, I listen to this. I'm trying to make this as brief as possible because it's it can be quite complex. Um, uh, but I hope uh, you'll get something out of this. Uh, also, I want to mention I'm in the process of producing another extremely eye-opening expose on the surveillance states, the shadow government intelligence agencies, uh, increase in spying on Americans, especially conservatives, which I am one, patriots, and Trump supporters. Um, it has gotten to the level of being outrageous. And the woke uh, anti-patriot community has now even penetrated and taken over the CIA, which I warned about back in 1994 in an article that was leaked and is now out there on the internet. Um, so let me begin by discussing this. <clears throat> I have put this to, to rest with a video on this channel called The Hammer Hoax, which you can watch and you can look at the evidence and the witness testimony I have on there and you can decide for yourself uh, whether the hammer alleged super CIA spy computer program is legitimate or if it's a, a hoax. Uh, this, as hoaxes do, they, they will circulate on various uh, conspiracy websites. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's natural, I suppose, that that would happen. I would encourage everybody to practice uh, what used to be taught in universities, and that is critical thinking. That is not critical race theory. Uh, you'll see my exposés expose on the outrage of that. I'm talking about critical thinking, where you take what you read and you examine it for facts and evidence, and examine every word uh, for its meaning. It's very important, and that's how you spot deception. So I, I will be doing, God willing, a program on critical thinking skills and how to practice those. Uh, as an analyst, when I was inside the agency, one of the good things I took was a training course on, on an analytics and analyzing information. Uh, and uh, it was really some of the best training I received, despite my later confrontation to the CIA for the poisoning of my family. So uh, you can go to uh, on this channel uh, and uh, you can watch my video titled The Hammer Hoax. Uh, and you'll see a compelling case that the hammer is a fraud. Even I've been in contact on programs with the chief witness, Mike Zulo, Zulo who was the chief investigator when, uh, who essentially is a fraud and con man, Dennis Montgomery, tried to pull off the hammer folks. And Mike and I have done shows on that. And uh, Mike and Sharon Rondeau have published excellent uh, um, uh, exposés on the hammer, which I'd recommend you go out, Google Sharon Rondeau. I think it's called the post email. Google her uh, investigative site and you will see some uh, phenomenal investigative reporting on the hammer folks. Uh, and let me mention that, that there are real conspiracies uh, like uh, the JFK assassination and the RFK assassinations. I've done programs on both of those with the evidence that there was government specifically CIA involvement in those murders. Uh, but the hammer hoax is not one of these legitimate conspiracy theories. And, and, and that is, is something that's important to point out. And just, just recently, um, I uh, was requested to go on uh, John B. Wells' program, Caravan to Midnight. And uh, I agreed to go on just to discuss 
the, the prior agreement was to discuss current events, especially after the election. Uh, how, but when the interview began, uh, uh, John Wells began pushing the hammer. Uh, Thomas McAlerney, Paul Vallely, and Mary Fanning, all promoters of the hammer hoax, um, and claiming that the CIA stole the election uh, in 2020, which couldn't, is patently false. Uh, and uh, uh, John Wells uh, began to attempt to do a hit piece on me in the interview. Uh, and uh, it, it's the only interview I've ever terminated and said, we're done. Uh, and just encourage people to go to this channel and watch my video on the hammer hoax. I did that because that's my last word on the subject. Uh, and these people, of course, are out there attacking me all over the place uh, because they didn't bank a former CIA officer with a high level clearance, uh, knowing how things operate on the inside, what the CIA has done and what the CIA has not done, uh, and uh, clearly what is an elaborate hoax perpetrated by a brilliant con man, Dennis Montgomery. All of uh, the information that I present on Dennis Montgomery and the Hammer is available out there on the internet. You can go to Scribid and look at the legal documents of Dennis Montgomery. Uh, and uh, read the articles about his conning of the government uh, and uh, the, the, uh, the con of the hammer hoax, all out there, all documented, all there in black and white for everybody to see. So the only thing they can do is attack me personally because they can't attack the evidence. Now, let me address this too. Uh, Major General Paul Vallely. Uh, Paul Vallely is, is a nice man. I have uh, interacted with him on the Citizens Commission on Benghazi, of which I was a willing part and gave uh, several speeches at the Benghazi Commission to standing ovations uh, because I'm very passionate about that. Uh, but uh, the, the serious concern I have about Paul Vallely is he was photographed uh, training leaders of the Islamic Free Syrian Army in Libya. One of these photographs showed uh, Vallely in an FSA, Free, Free Syrian Army FSA vehicle with an ISIS slogan written on the side of it. Uh, we know, and I've reported this, that Hillary Clinton's State Department and John Brennan's CIA were training the Free Syrian Army. No one could meet and train the FSA leadership without the approval and support of the CIA. Let me say that again. No one could meet and train the FSA leadership without the approval and support of the CIA. I have publicly several times protested the CIA support and training of the FSA for years. There is no such thing as a moderate Islamic army. By definition, their goal is a global Islamic caliphate. That is the basic belief of every Islamic uh, army. And it is also the case with the FSA. Uh, the CIA never should have trained, and, the, and Hillary Clinton's State Department never should have armed the Free Syrian Army. Their goal, although they're courting the U.S. and its money and arms and training, their goal is the establishment of a global Islamic cal caliphate, as I've mentioned before. Uh, we learned how badly this goes uh, with the CIA training Osama bin Laden in surveillance, how to use stinger missiles, how to blow things up, vehicle bombs, and other things. How stupid can you be and still breathe? And we saw where that one came from. So uh, in my opinion, any connections that Paul Vallely has with the CIA need to be investigated. Next, uh, Thomas McAlerney, and especially a lady called Mary Fanning, who I'll talk about in a moment, uh, has, uh, is an avid supporter of the hammer. Uh, and uh, McAlerney even came out uh, and I'll mention to what I, I think has happened to these people. Uh, Thomas McInerney came out and claimed that uh, Army Special Forces raided a CIA installation in Germany that was uh, participating in stealing the election from Donald Trump. McInerney claimed and is still claiming that the U.S. Army Special Forces raided that CIA base and several of the Special Forces members were killed. That is patently false. Is he lying? Uh, I don't know what else it could be, everybody. Here's a quote from the Military Times, and I would recommend that you go to this article. from the. This is from the Military Times, everybody. Uh, the publication that uh, is uh, uh, published for and to 
the military military members. You can reach it at militarytimes.com slash news slash your army slash 2020 1201. And you can just probably do a, a general Google search of military times. And three star uh, falsely claims US soldiers died attacking a CIA facility. Um, so I'd encourage you to Google that and read that. Let me uh, read a quote from the Military Times. Quote, this is from the Pentagon. Quote, McAlerney in an email to Military Times did not offer, excuse me, it's from the Military Times, which represents the Pentagon. Um, quote, McAlerney in an email to Military Times did not offer more information regarding the sources of what he told a conspiracy laden website. And that's where McAlerney is going to these conspiracy laden websites because the, the even conservative news media won't touch him. Uh, and as we know, he was fired from Fox News for some of his uh, outlandish comments. And I'll leave that between he and Fox News. Uh, McInerney, in an email on Military Times, did not offer more information regarding the sources of what he told conspiracy-laden websites over the Thanksgiving holiday, nor did he respond to Army statements about his statement's falsehood. But even though Big Army and U.S. Army Special Operations Command have told Military Times that there was no such attack, or loss of life, retired Air Force Lieutenant General Thomas McAlerney is sticking by his claims. They became so widely distributed on social media that numerous accounts on Twitter falsely claimed that five soldiers killed in the Sinai helicopter crash were really killed in a firefight with the CIA. This is patently false. Uh, I have to assume that Thomas McAlerney is not an ignorant individual. Uh, so if he is an intelligent person, um, why is he doing this? Why is he spreading this false information? Uh, more on that later. Let me mention too that Thomas McElerney has not had even an Air Force clearance in 26 years since his retirement. And his primary source for this is none other than brilliant known con man, Dennis Montgomery, the inventor of the Hammer Super Spy Program hoax. Uh, and, and you can, again, you can go read my YouTube account on the hammer, which I think puts the issue to rest, at least uh, based on uh, my view and the view of those who watched my video. So when the hammer didn't work and was debunked spe specifically by me, uh, McInerney altered it and then called it the quote unquote scorecard, claiming that the CIA had hacked and manipulated the 2020 election. Sadly, he was joined by Sidney Powell, who I warned this was a hoax and to avoid it. He was joined by Sidney Powell when she got up in a, in a very uh, shocking press conference and claimed she had a Kraken that the CIA had hacked the 2020 election. Uh, Tucker Carlson, of whom I'm a big fan, asked Sidney Powell simply for the evidence. Even, even told her she could come on for an entire week if she wanted to present the evidence. And Sidney Powell uh, refused and then accused uh, Tucker Carlson of bullying her, which of course he did not. And then the hammer enthusiasts went after Tucker Carlson. Uh, that just goes to show you uh, the number of people that have been deceived by this. And one of my missions, of course, as you know, my master's level degree is in the detection of deception, forensic psychophysiology. I, I hate deception and, and uh, hoaxes because they deceive good people. And that's what upsets me the most is that they deceive good people into believing a lie. Why is McAlerney doing this? Uh, he's a close associate of Valerie. They wrote a book together. Uh, and Valerie is also pushing the hammer. Why is Thomas McAlerney doing this? Uh, that's, the, that's the question. And I, I think if we do enough investigation, perhaps we can find the answer. Are McAlerney and Valerie just gullible and being manipulated by the brilliant con man, Dennis Montgomery? Well, that's one possibility. Or are they working for the CIA to create a PSYOP to divert attention away from the real spying done by Michael Hayden and the NSA through NS702 queries used by the Obama administration to, to, to actually spy on the Trump campaign. That is a fact. That is documented. I've done programs on that. Uh, so wh why are they diverting attention from that with this false hoax? Uh, and again, my concern is their connection to the CIA. 
which uh, I just uh, uh, covered, uh, that that seems to be a distinct possibility. Uh, and also, I want, I want uh, everyone to consider this. Why does McAlerney, Vallely, and Fanning never mention former NSA director Michael Hayden, who did spy on Americans and spied on the Trump team? Why do they never mention Michael Hayden, who did, really did the spy? They leave him completely out of their hoax. Uh, that's that's uh, worth noting. One witness close to Dennis Montgomery, very close to Dennis Montgomery, I've done programs and shows with him, uh, told me that he saw what looked like NSA thin thread classified data on Dennis Montgomery's printer. Where did that come from? That was Michael Hayden's data. Did Dennis Montgomery steal it? Was it given to him? Is someone afraid of going to prison because they had NSA classified data in their possession? Or was he working with Hayden to cover up what Hayden was doing? Or are these people working for Hayden to cover up what Hayden was doing? Uh, uh, that's, that's extremely important. All right. And we also have to understand and note why does the patriotic chairman of the intelligence, uh, the uh, Congressional Intelligence Committee, Congressman Devin Nunes, and Senator Rand Paul, both who have exposed NSA spying on Americans, why did they never mention the hammer? I know, I can tell you, they know about it. Why did they never mention it? Why did they never bring it up? Both these men have blown the whistle on shadow government surveillance of US citizens, specifically the NSA, specifically the Obama administration, Susan Rice, Samantha Powers, and others. Why did they never mention the hammer? Well, there's a reason for that, because the hammer is a hoax. Uh, so that's important to note. And I would encourage everyone to follow the facts and follow uh, credible sources, uh, instead of some of these wild conspiracy sites who have no background or credentials whatsoever and circulate this stuff to gain followers and sell hats and t-shirts. Uh, okay. Now, McLarney Fanning, especially Mary Fanning and Thomas McLarney, only go to fringe conspiracy sites, like I've mentioned, and they're never, they're never brought on conservative shows like The Daily Wire and others. And there's a reason for that, because what they're promoting is false. Let me mention here too humbly that my CIA clearance was higher than both Vallely or McElerney, both, both uh, the clearance that they ever had. My CIA clearance was higher than both of them when they're in the military. That is, unless they are current CIA operatives. I can find no other explanation for Val Vallely leading the Free Syrian Army, as I mentioned, and both men pushing the hammer fraud, uh, possibly as a diversion. That is how serious this is. This is not a small matter. I'm not bringing up the hammer again because uh, uh, I just want to stir the pot. This is a serious matter. I'm bringing this up because people are being deceived and they're being lied to. And the big question is why? The big question is who's behind it? And as you know, uh, at personal risk even to my life, I have exposed the CIA and the shadow government. And they're spying on Americans in the past their illegal operations that they conduct inside and outside the United States, and the fact that the CIA is an unconstitutional organization based, founded on, and operating in lying and deception. Now, <clears throat> the Citizens Commission on National Security. I warned the president of the Citizens Commission on National Security three times about the hammer hoax and presented my evidence. I also warned him uh, and I, I, I asked him to pass this to Thomas McAlerney, who is a member of the CCNS, pleaded with him to pass it to Thomas McAlerney and to stop this hoax. And I also warned the president of CCNS about the, McAlerney's false claim of the CIA raid in Germany, C, the CIA bases raid in Germany. Uh, I believe that the head of CCN, CCNS is a good man, but uh, his hands are bound because Thomas McAlerney and Paul Vallely formed the Citizens Commission, the Commission on National Security, and they are behind it. So uh, I feel for him because he's bound by that. So uh, Mary Fanning, of course, in her def defamation campaign, because she can't refute my facts, is out there publishing in a rabid form 
all kinds of stuff about me out there. Uh, uh, that I was fired from the Citizens Commission on National Security by Thomas McLean. Patently false again. Let me, let me state this for the record. And this can be proven if you want to contact the president of CCNS. I never applied for a position on the CCNS. I never approved my name being added to their list of staff members, and I never participated in any of their events. And frankly, I did not do so because I was concerned about CIA influence on the committee, specifically regarding Thomas McAlerney and Paul Valerie. When the head of CCNS contacted me with McAlerney's threat that I was going to be removed from the commission, I told him simply this, and you'll have to forgive me for this one. I told him simply this, uh, you give Thomas McAlerney a message from me. You tell Thomas McAlerney that I said, uh, that I said, excuse me, you tell Thomas McAlerney that I said to pound sand. That was my last statement. You tell Thomas McAlerney I said to pound sand. Everybody, I stood up against the CIA and the poisoning and destruction of my family. And I almost died doing it. My wife and oldest son were almost terminally ill from the, the poison that they were exposed to. The CIA destroyed my career, took my, took my pension, raised the interest in all my CIA loans, uh, and went after me with a vengeance because they were terrified. And a CIA operative pilot came out later and told me this. They were terrified that the news media was going to find out what was happening on the base where we were poisoned. So let me just say this. I'm not easily threatened especially if it's connected to a CIA attempt to fur further silence me. Sadly for them, that just makes me more determined. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of the CIA. I'm not afraid of what they can do to me. I stand for the truth, and I know the truth always wins. The truth always comes out, always, every single time. That's the nature of truth. So um, I suppose... This is at least a lesson that retired military generals can either be easily hoodwinked by a brilliant con man or they've been recruited by the CIA. Now, let me talk about uh, Mary Fanning. Mary Fanning is the chief source uh, of the hammer hoax. And uh, uh, it has been proven that she is in direct contact with fraud and con man Dennis Montgomery. Reports on Dennis Montgomery, the legal cases, all the stuff out on, on the internet, everything that you can find with your own personal search, state and prove that Dennis Montgomery is a fraud and a con man. That is Mary Fanning's chief source for the hammer. It is Thomas McElerney's chief source for scorecard. And that's extremely important to know. Uh, the Hammer PSYOP team, and that, that has to be what it is, no longer, mentioned, no longer mentions Dennis Montgomery as their source. They never mention his name anymore since I exposed him. Uh, they now say that it is a secret source, uh, a secret whistleblower, an insider. Uh, and the proof uh, that uh, he has is too secret to show anyone. If you've seen my programs on detecting deception, you, you know that whenever someone says their source is too secret to reveal, or their information is too classified or secret to reveal, it is a lie. It is a deception. If it's the truth, and if it's important that American people are being spied on, that information should be published all over the net and all over news programs for the entire American people to see. But it's not, because it's too secret. It's uh, also really odd to me that Mary Fanning has no journalistic background, no credentials whatsoever. She came out of nowhere and never shows her face in interviews. Uh, and she's in direct contact with Dennis Montgomery. Uh, extremely strange. She's made it her mission, of course, to defame me, all of the internet, as I mentioned. Uh, why is she doing that? What is she trying to hide or cover up? Is she trying to hide her reputation because she's pushed a fraud or a hoax? Is she trying to sell her book? Uh, per, I don't know. Uh, well, actually, I, ladies and gentlemen, I think I do know. I think, I think this is a, a psyop. Anyway, I'm not going to waste my time defaming Mary Fanning or returning her defamation or any of the hammer promoters. I am just reporting the facts and evidence of my investigation. 
and I will continue to do. All right, let me move on because I'm getting attacked pretty brutally for this one. And uh, I'm used to being attacked. Uh, the CI went after me for, goodness gracious, uh, over 18 years. They went after me heavily uh, from two, 2001 to, to about uh, 2000 and, uh, let's see, 2001 to 2002. From 2001 to 2002, the CIA attacked me heavily, attacked my family, attacked our finances, attacked, attacked uh, uh, my reputation, blackballed me with uh, other former CIA chiefs I worked with who wanted to hire me in their companies, but had to have CIA clearance. And, and it was agonizing. It was grueling. But uh, I did it for my family, my wife and kids. I love my kids more than my own life. I'd do it again. Let me talk, so let me talk about this, QAnon, the big subject of QAnon. Uh, you, again, regarding QAnon, you can watch the results of my personal investigation in, into Q on, on this YouTube channel, and I approached Q like I do everything else as if I was doing an investigation, looking for the facts in an unbiased fashion. Uh, you can find my uh, results on Q there. And of course, I have been brutally attacked and defamed by supporters of QAnon, especially the rabid supporters of QAnon. Um, and let, let me just say this. The heartbreaking part of this for me is that many QAnons are good patriotic people who think that they're following a secret insider that's going to stop all of the evil in government in the world. So uh, I'm not disparaging them. I'm trying to alert them. Uh, to think about this with critical thinking skills and examine the evidence. Um, Q is uh, not a high-level clear insider. In reality, uh, Q is an artificial intelligence system that has gone out and compiled huge swaths of information and then put them out as drops, appearing to look like they're actually real. And Q, they, them, have compiled drops that appeal to everyone's outrage, especially over pedophilia and government corruption, and is deceiving them into thinking that a great awakening is, great awakening is coming when all that is evil will be abolished. Uh, and the Q group and the AI system is giving people exactly what they want to hear. Good people. Uh, so Q uh, appeals to people's outrage, uses that, to smear them into the delusion. Everybody, Q is not a top secret, a cleared high level insider. Q has been wrong multiple times, as I've said in, in uh, several interviews with legitimate uh, news programs. Q has been wrong multiple times on very significant issues. Just a few, for example, trust sessions uh, or else, or even a veiled threat, trust sessions or else. Well, it turns out sessions became uh, one of the worst things that happened to Donald Trump, betrayed him, essentially. He was the, uh, the root cause of the entire Mueller investigation. Um, another falsity, Mueller was secretly, secretly working for Trump as Mueller was going after Trump. Well, we all know how that worked out. False. Also, Hillary Clinton was going to be arrested the following Monday, tried and put in Guantanamo, which never happened. That, that Monday came and went and nothing happened. And then also Trump was rounding up all the US government pedophiles before he left the White House and they were going to be flown to Guantanamo and, Guantanamo and put in jail. Never happened, wasn't true. And then even more uh, of a delusion, Q claimed that on March 4th, 2021, Trump would be reinstated as the president and moved back into the White House. You probably know by now that March 4th, 2021 came and went and that never happened. These are delusions designed to appeal, appeal to people that want these things to happen. Now, let me say this. I was in CIA counterintelligence in one of the most sensitive uh, branches in the CIA investigating internal espionage. If a person with a Q clearance, which is a Department of Energy, not a military, it's a Department of Energy nuclear clearance, was posting classified information on the child porn ridden dark web, we would have known who he was in two weeks. Uh, this insider simply did not exist. I knew that from the beginning when first Q first came out and posted things. And people were asking me, what do you think about Q? And I would say, well, I'm not, I'm on the fence. I'm not gonna make it, you know. 
because I knew the blowback I would get when I finally re revealed that Q was a fake. And I did receive that blowback. I knew it was coming. I was ready for it. I have to put out the truth, everybody. And uh, there's, there's a price you pay when you do that. And it's uh, personal attacks on your reputation. Uh, and that, that's just going to happen. It's interesting to note, uh, very interesting in my view, that the creator of 8chan, which controls Q's drops, was a fellow by the name of James Wilcox, who was the developer and operator of an Asian porn hub operated out of the Philippines. What a prince. Uh, and this is the person that is managing Q drops, and also it looks like possibly his son. Uh, we should stop right there. Anyway, um, we all need to know this. What I want to, as I close on this, uh, I, I want everybody to note that Q is not a person. Q is an automated, uh, it, it, Q is an artificial intelligence system, as I mentioned a little while ago, that takes reams of information, compiles it down, and publishes, publishes it as drops, as if it came from a high-level cleared insight. But it attracts a lot of people to QAnon, uh, especially young people, is QAnon is a, a, a complex video game-like deception where drops come out, many of which are just random typing on the keyboard. But when drops come out, it's a code that you have to solve. There are people out there that have created an entire industry and are selling hats and t-shirts because they've found the code. They can decode Q's drops. <laughs> and if you read some of them, I mean, it, you, you, you would laugh if it wasn't so serious. Uh, but it's a video game like deception that people have to decode and that attracts especially a lot of young people. But what Q is doing is, is bringing these people into a, what amounts to a delusion. And uh, that's pretty serious. All right. Um, a lot of good people, as I mentioned before, uh, are, are QAnon followers. There are a lot of QAnons who are good people that don't know what I have just told you. Hopefully, when they see this, they'll think twice about supporting Q. And they'll think for themselves. And I think many, many of them, many of you will. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, and also worth noting is uh, there are there is a segment of QAnons, and I, I think it's a, a smaller segment that are planning and promoting violence and threaten anyone who challenges Q. Q even in a post after I exposed Q uh, did a Q drop mentioning by, me by name with a bloody red Punisher skull on the drop. It's out there. You can find it. Uh, if you want that, that uh, connection, you can ask. Uh, I can give you uh, the picture that Q dropped, or you can go out and search, and it's there. So Q himself, themself, have threatened me personally. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Now, one of the things that Mary Fanning is publishing out there in an attempt to try to discredit me and protect her hoax is that I was fired from the CIA because I misused the government credit card. First of all, I res resigned from the CIA because they were breaking into my house, following my family, tapping my computers and phones. I resigned because I filed suit against them and we were entering into a huge battle that I fought from the outside with my courageous attorney, Clint B, who I hope someday, he's a hero, someday will get the credit he deserves. The CIA tried to silence him being a courageous Texas, Texas attorney, he would have none of that. So Mary Fanny, of course, is defaming me on multiple conspiracy theory platforms. Um, but what she didn't uh, figure on, nor the Hammer team did, is that I was a real high-level cleared CIA insider and whistleblower with the highest clearance in the government. And I'm intimately familiar with internal CIA operations, the good, the bad, and the ugly including CI computer networks, both domestically and internationally. I received an award for that. one. So they have to brutally attack me personally because they didn't figure on a real CIA whistleblower who risked his life exposing the CIA coming out and uh, proving uh, their falsity. So Fanning is now spreading false information about me 
and my use of a government credit, credit card, leaving out, of course, my family's poisoning and evacuation. I would recommend that you go to my website, kevinship.com. That's kevinship.com. Go to the upper blue bar, open that up, and you'll see all of the documents that the CIA blacked out and tried to cover up that I published publicly, uh, frankly, risking prison because uh, they had invoked the state secrets privilege and uh, I uh, ignored that and published all uh, their cover up anyway because it was illegal what they did and they knew it. Uh, you can see all the documents they, the CIA tried to cover up that I revealed to the public. Uh, again, risk in prison to do so, but uh, as the saying goes, you can mess with a man, but you don't mess with his family. They hurt my kids. Uh, the thing that I love most in life I was very ill when I was younger, and the doctor said I would never have children. Well, I did. I got three, and they're the love of my life. You don't mess with a man's children. You, anyway, you can go to the upper blue bar, and you can see these documents. And you can see the account of the government credit card. Read that and see the facts. So let me just cover it briefly um, to uh, show you what the, the, the facts are. Uh, after my family's exposure to this deadly toxin, which was either liquid mustard gas, a mustard gas shell had percolated up in our yard, or neurotoxic black mold that was infested throughout the house, we were never, never able to prove which one it was, although the symptoms match uh, a mustard gas exposure. But uh, we were never to, to, to prove uh, what it was. Uh, we were evacuated, the chief of base, his name is Chris, ordered uh, that our house be burned to the ground and the evidence destroyed. Um, my attorney, courageous uh, Clint B, uh, fought the CIA uh, through a federal district judge and ordered them not to burn the house down. That was destruction of evidence. So um, that's uh, what uh, we were exposed to. And one of those, one of those two. Um, so, uh, after all our property was because of the contamination in the house, and many of you know this story because it's out there in several interviews I've done, all of our property, a company called ServPro came in and did their own study of the toxins in the house and published a report that yes, there were toxins in there and yes, our family needed to get out of there and that our, our property was contaminated uh, by some substance in the house, all of our property. So ServPro proceeded to come in, box up, and remove all of our personal property, furniture, clothes, my wife's ex expensive dresses that were her prized possession, all removed from the house, boxed, boxed up by ServPro and taken out and destroyed, including our baby pictures and all of the, the, the baby stuff from our, our baby books. You don't think that made me mad? Uh, oh, yes, it did. Then we were ordered to leave the house uh, and the, the CIA chief of base, Chris, ordered my wife and I into his office and ordered us to use my government credit card for evacuation expenses, all evacuation expenses, as we left the house while he was planning on burning it down. My wife was there, my former wife was there. This caused a divorce in our family. Uh, my wife was very traumatized by this and uh, I don't blame her, uh, but she can witness witnessed all these things. Um, so, all our property had been destroyed. I served her. The only thing that I had to say was my wife's expensive heirloom furniture that she inherited from her grandmother. This is priceless, priceless stuff. Just couldn't have it destroyed. So I had served pro take that, all, all those heirlooms of furniture and put it in their decontamination warehouse for decontamination. Sir so Procaine picked it all up, took it to their warehouse, stored it in their warehouse. Then I got a call from the Serve Pro rep, and I won't mention her name because she was a good person. And I got a call from the Serve, and I can if, if necessary, I mean, if, factually. <laughs> um, then I got a call from the Serve Pro representative that confirmed the contamination in her house. She said that she had to leave our family's case because she had been given, quote, an offer she could not refuse, unquote, by the CIA's contract company on the base, on that site. Yeah. So we moved all that we'd left, which fit in a car top carrier. That's all our family had left and stayed in a hotel, Virginia. 
and in Virginia for over a month with all of our kids. Two nights after we checked into this hotel in Virginia, I received a call from ServPro. They had been gotten to. ServPro ordered me to pay them $15,000, which they never said it was gonna cost, ordered, ordered me to pay them $15,000 by the next day or they would put all of my wife's heirloom furniture at the curb. Yeah. So I used the government credit card to pay ServPro, which obviously had been intimidated by the CI and everybody. I would do the same thing again. Back in Virginia, uh, and I was always two steps ahead of the CIA because I was them. I know them. I was trained by them. I know how the system works and I know how to beat them. Back in Virginia, I had $15,000 in my personal savings account in the CIA credit union. So I went to the credit union at that point, probably being tracked by the CIA, my movements, within the buildings, and I knew it. I went to the CIA uh, Northwest Federal Credit Union. Uh, where I had $15,000 in personal savings, and I took that $15,000 and, and I paid the credit card in full. Um, to, I took, uh, yeah, I, I took what I had in the Northwest Federal Credit Union uh, savings account, loan account, and uh, paid this, this, the uh, credit card in full, knowing that the CIA was trying to use that against me. Let me mention too, also, during this time, I guess the CIA knew that I was going to pay off what they were trying to use against me. And what they did was they raised all the interest rates on my Northwest Federal Credit Union, CIA Credit Union loans to make them unaffordable by my family who is now in financial crisis. Yeah, they did that. When I contacted the head of the CIA Northwest Federal Credit Union and told them about the, the uh, loans being raised and the loan officer that I worked with getting uh, the $15,000 from, and I'm trying to remember if it was a loan or personal savings. Um, I'd have to go back and check. It was, either, it was either a loan that I got from the Northwest Federal Credit Saving, Savings, Northwest Federal Credit Union, my savings account, or a loan that I took out. I'd have to go back and check uh, to see which one that was. Anyway, when I contacted the head of the Northwest Federal Credit Union, and advised him that the interest rates on my loans had been raised, I put in for a hardship loan so the interest rates on my credit cards, Northwest Federal Union uh, credit uh, loans, car loans and other things too, would be uh, reduced uh, due to hardship. Uh, so I had applied for this hardship loan to CI Credit Union, called back after I got the loan, paid off the credit card, I think it was a loan uh, versus savings. I, again, I'm sure that. But anyway, we'll, we'll, let's say it's a loan. Uh, when I got the loan from the credit union and paid off the CIA uh, credit card, um, and all the interest rates were then raised by Northwest Federal Credit Union. Again, I called the head of the credit union and, and advised him of that. The lady who had processed the loan no longer worked there. She was gone. Also, uh, he looked, got into the computer during our conversation, which I taped, got into my, uh, my accounts and saw that all of the interest had not been lowered as was agreed to in the signed hardship loan agreement by the credit union. They hadn't been lowered, they'd been raised. He said to me, quote, my God, this looks like some kind of retribution, unquote. Then he never contacted me again after that. I attempted to contact him, and none of my contacts, uh, attempted contacts were returned. All right, now, uh, my family's personal injury suit against the CIA continued. The CIA was in an uproar, terrified. None other than John Brennan, was the chief of staff for then director George Tenet, the chief plaintiff in my case. John Brennan what his, was his chief of staff. What a coincidence. Anyway, our personal injury suit uh, against uh, the CIA was supported by a federal district judge based on the evidence that I provided to him. And the federal district judge ordered the CIA to a mediated settlement to settle with our family for the damage that they had done. The CIA subsequently tried to use the uh, false credit card accusations to attack me personally. And this is explained in detail in the blue bar on my website. So I won't go into details here. Uh, this entire incident, this is uh, uh, worth noting. The entire incident was internal to the CIA. It was internal CIA uh, information, which uh, would be classified. Um, 
and in my internal private information. Uh, so how did Mary Fanning find out about this uh, credit card accusation the CIA was trying to use against me? How did she find out about that? Uh, the only way is that she had been in touch with a CIA operative because it was not known except on the inside. Um, so is she being used by the CIA to continue to attack me? Um, again, uh, you can reach conclusions from the evidence. Now, why does she not show her faces in interviews? I, I, I've never seen anybody that does that, uh, that doesn't have something to hide. So there's going to be a response by Mary Fanning and others to this uh, video. Um, they're going to go after me for all of this information because they can't refute the evidence and they have to protect their falsehood. So just uh, everybody just watch for it. You'll know my evidence has struck a nerve. You can, you can go to kevinship.com, look at the actual documents in the blue bar at the top, the actual documents and evidence, and you can see those uh, for yourself. Uh, is this possibly the CIA uh, still trying to silence me, which they've been doing for almost 20 years? Uh, it, it's, it certainly bears that appearance. Um, and uh, my conclusion is I think that is uh, very possible what's going on. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to respond to defamation or them defaming me. I will just let the truth speak for itself. So I hope uh, this was enlightening to everybody, uh, and uh, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. And if you want uh, uh, more of my members-only exposés on the shadow government deep state and my, the training videos I've done based on my CIA experience, you can go to my Patreon channel, which can be found at patreon.com slash Kevin underscore ship, uh, and follow my regular tweets as, as long as I'm not banned. Uh, on Twitter at Twitter at Kevin underscore ship. I expose the shadow government all the time, consistent. And of course, now I'm exposing the Biden administration as I did with the Obama administration. I'm exposing the, the Biden, Biden administration's uh, abuse, violations of the Constitution, and their increased use of intelligence agencies to monitor and spy on conservatives, patriots, and Trump supporters. Um, so you can go there. Uh, and, and more than anything, I appreciate all of your prayers and support. Uh, they mean more to me than, than you know, because I need it. Uh, this is a very lonely job at times. Uh, and I take a lot of personal attacks, uh, a, a, lot, a lot of times, and even threats. Um, so the notes that you send telling me that you're praying for me and the wonderful comments uh, that that you post uh, to to my tw on my Twitter and to my YouTubes, uh, everybody there would keep me going, really, and uh, the good Lord's protection is something that I I trust in. So uh, God bless everyone, uh, and uh, we will see you next time.